We welcome you back once again today into the town mead. And today I want to address the issue that has always existed within the life of the church and continues through this day all the way up until the second coming when the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns. I want to talk to you about living amidst false teachers. Living amidst, living at, within and during this time of period where we're living with a lot of false teachers in the midst of a lot of false teachers who are out there who proclaim something and you need to have a, a listening ear and a discerning ear. Let me draw your attention because you see, just as we see the worldwide crisis right now with the coronavirus, you have a lot of false products out there, people who are marketing all kinds of cures and all kinds of things. Are out there because they're seeking to get your, they, they want to put their hands in your pocket. That's what they're looking to do. Well, within the life of the church, and I'm talking about in general, within the body of Christ, in the world of Christianity, we have literally hundreds and thousands of false teachers out there who are also trying to put their hand in your pocket. You and I have been given the person of the Holy Spirit to dwell within our hearts and within our lives to give us the discernment that we need necessary to determine whether or not the person who is speaking is speaking truth. And you and I have a responsibility to know the Word of God. Let me draw your attention to the book of Jude. It's the next to the last book right before the book of Revelation. And in Jude... I want you to see this, I mean, start verse 17, 18, and 19. Let's read verse 17, 18, and 19 together. Look what he says. But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, in the last time there will be mockers, following after their own godly lust. These are the ones who cause divisions, worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. And I want you to understand that's exactly where we are today. Because he tells us, okay, and we all know, I think that we all know how dangerous incorrect teaching can be in the Christian walk. So many Christians whose lives have been have been held back and damaged because they sat under the teaching ministry or the preaching ministry of somebody who was ignorant of the Word of God or knowingly was teaching something falsely. And then it takes them a long time to recover and to become untrusting of any pastor, any preacher of the Word of God, or for that matter, any church. Now, today we're going to be looking at ways to identify false teachers. That's what I want to talk to you about today. And ways to identify false teachers, living amidst false teachers, living in the midst of them. Or as put it this way, they live in the midst of us. Right? And so this is going to help us to prepare for the things that Satan might send our way and continually does. So go back to the text with me, because I think it's important that everything that we say and do has to be based in the text, but it also must be contextual. And so um, when, when you're drawing a principle out of the Word of God, make sure you understand what the context is first. And here we find in Jude, and I want you to see this one, because in Jude 17, he says, but you, beloved, he is speaking to the body of Christ. He's speaking to all those who are believers, to all those who say they are genuinely born again. Okay? So he's speaking to us. Okay? And he says this, to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jude is warning us that we've already been warned before by the other previous apostles who have warned us about false teachers. So now he's come to remind us of that fact. And then in verse 18 he says, that they were saying to you, in the last time, there will be, in the last time, look at verse 18, in the last time, what last time? He's talking about the period of time between when Jesus first walked on earth and to the second coming when he comes back. That's the period that we in, and it's been approximately 2,000 years. So this problem has been around for 2,000 years, I want you to understand it, and continues, and it's alive and well today. 
Now, as I get a lot of emails and I get a lot of text messages and I get all kinds of communication, and I and so much of it comes from pastors and preachers who are just utterly either ignorant of the Word of God or they know they're teaching something falsely. And so I spend most of my time having to correct them and rebuke them. And yet, they're, they're, they're running wild out on the Internet, on radio and television, and especially during these days, the same way that everybody's trying to sell you a product that's going to cure you of whatever the next major disease is, including this one that we're facing right now during this coronavirus crisis. So there's no difference between them. But I want you to see with a discerning eye, a discerning ear, a discerning heart, how you can begin to identify who these people are. So he says in verse 18, he says, In the last time they will be mockers, following after their own ungodly lusts. Verse 19, these are the ones who cause divisions and worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. So we're going to focus in on verse 18 and 19. First, false teachers are mockers. They mock God. They mock the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They mock the Holy Spirit. They mock the Word of God. And they mock you as a believer because they, they're convinced that they can get over on you. They, they're convinced that you're so ignorant of the Word of God that they can just say anything in Jesus' name and get you to buy into them. So they're mocking you. That's what they're doing. And they knew it. They do it knowingly. Listen to me. That is, they attack or attempt to discredit the Word of God or the church. They're going to either try to discredit the Word of God or the church or both. So when you're listening to these people, you can begin to discern what are they attacking. Are they attacking sin? Are they attacking unrighteousness? Or are they attacking the Word of God and the church? Because if that's what they're doing, immediately you know these are mockers. Listen, when such a message is presented passionately and, intelli and intelligently, and they're very good at this, they're very intelligent, they're very passionate. Don't misunderstand, these people are not stupid. They're intelligent and they're passionate, right? Ever since people can get caught up in, in, in the anti-church movement, and you have a lot of people out there right now, right now, who's been hurt by a pastor, hurt by a preacher, hurt by the church, and what you did is that you painted every Christian, every preacher, every pastor, every church with the same brush. Because somebody did you wrong in the life of the church. Now, you're not even consistent with the application of that brush. Because how many times do you go out into the world? To the train station? To the airplane? To the bus? To the supermarket? To the store? And you have the same kind of treatment you receive there, but it doesn't stop you from going back to that same store, does it? It doesn't stop you going out to the, to the world. So you see, you then become a hypocrite in the way you apply your self-moral, self-righteous standing. And you're, e and you're gullible to fall into the trap of listening to these people because they become anti-word, anti-church. And you hear things like this, well, I'm not religious, um, I don't go to church, but I'm spiritual. I have no clue what that means. The devil is spiritual. The demons are spiritual. Just think about that for a moment with me. You don't even qualify your own words. So listen, when such a message is presented passionately and intelligently, even sincere people, even the most sincere people can get caught up in the anti-church sentiment and find themselves doubting the truth of Scripture. I know a lot of so-called believers, or people who tell me they're believers, I can't question whether they're believers or not, they're born again in the heart. I, I can't see the heart. But their actions is telling me that they have fallen into the trap of anti-church and anti-scripture. So this is what this is the work of the mockers. Secondly, go back to verse 18. And that the apostles were saying to you, in the last time there will be mockers and following, this is the second part, following after their own godly lusts. Second thing, the false teachers will follow after their own lusts. It doesn't take long to figure this out, 
Okay? For these people, the interpretation of Scripture becomes a matter of selective beliefs. Well, that's your interpretation. But God told me this is my interpretation. And then they proceed to put it out as though it is the holy, righteous gospel. That their own interpretation is the only correct interpretation. They arrange their theology to justify all of their sinful habits and all of their simple, sinful desires. This is exactly what they do. And they're very good at it. Okay? And then third, look at verse 19. These are the ones who cause divisions and worldly-minded devoid of the Spirit. Look at verse 19. These are the ones who cause divisions. False teachers cause divisions. They're very good at it. Listen, they try to come across as superior to their listeners. They come across as superior to their listeners by claiming an experience that elevates them at a higher level than their listeners. And people go, ooh, ah, wow, oh my, oh my God. Look how spiritual he really is. And they just put that hook right in your nose because the next thing is coming is the hand is going into your pocket. Okay. So you, if you grasp that idea, this concept, what he's talking about in verse 19. Or if they don't have this higher experience or by professing more advanced more advanced spirituality that others can never hope to achieve because they went to the third heaven okay just like the apostle paul in the book of corinthians says okay and they tell you i just can't explain it to you but i am i i they, they got you convinced they almost walk on in on air listen and then fourth look look at what he says here in verse 19. these are the ones who cause divisions worldly minded look at this worldly minded devoid of the spirit listen these you know what these apostate people are doing because these are apostates these false teachers what they're doing is that they they're advertising themselves okay as having the highest spiritual knowledge okay but they're actually attracted to the most debased levels okay of life that's what they are Mm. See, they are not interested in the true teaching of God's word. That's the, they're not. Listen. But they're focused on what they can achieve. They're focused on what they can achieve. How many people will follow them or how many can earn, through, or how much they can earn through their teaching. Okay. So this is, um, let me see if I, I, I need to be careful with this part. Because a lot of these people, who are false teachers are pragmatists. Now, not all pragmatists are false teachers, but many false teachers are pragmatists. In other words, how fast can I get to the bottom line? How fast can I get into your pocket so that I will be recompensed, okay, remunerated, I can get paid, okay, and I'm going to make some money on this deal. Because it doesn't matter what they do, they end up making money somehow, somewhere along the line. So this is what false teachers, and we live among them, and we have been, and we have been warned. We have been warned since two thousand for the last two thousand years, because we're still in that last time period. And yet, thousands and thousands fall into that trap. The other day, I saw a couple of videos that were sent to me by WhatsApp. Okay? by false prophets and apostles and teachers and whatever those, whatever other titles they give themselves. Okay? And they were saying that if you send $100 into this prayer chain, God's going to deliver you from the coronavirus. And I, it's just amazing to me what they say and they do, and how many people fall into this trap because they utterly ignorant themselves of the Word of God. Now, what's the flip coin of this? What's the other side of this truth? Well, let me tell you, true spiritual-led teachers, okay, avoid these traps, and they recognize that two important uh, uh, keys, okay, have to be always demonstrated in their lives. Number one, humility and unity with the listener. So, you know what our job is? Our job is to take you to the Word of God, to draw you to the Word of God. It's not to draw you to us, it's to draw you to the Word of God. 
false teachers draw you away from the word of God to them. Let me show you. In Philippians chapter 2, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul speaks a truth. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's read it together. Philippians 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It says, Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete. By being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility. Of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. See, these are what we call true spiritual-led teachers. They avoid the traps of the false teachers. And when, and when you're receiving instruction, or when any of us are receiving instruction, you know what a wise believer is going to do? A wise believer is first going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit. Give me discernment in order to distinguish truth from error. Truth from error. Lord, I need your help. This sounds good, but I need you to reveal it to me. Go back into Philippians. And let's bring this to a close. In Philippians chapter 1, look at what it says in verse 9 and 10. Please, I implore you. I beg you. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. Read the scriptures for yourself. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, then let's conclude with this. And this I pray that your love may abound, he says, still more and more in what? In real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. 